From the time of our earliest pioneers to the era of renewable energy, Colorado continues to be carved and defined by its most precious finite resource. No river is too small to surrender or too large to fight over. While new technologies have transformed the agricultural and urban landscapes over the past 100 years, no technological advancement has ever had the singular power to transform society and economy like the application of water to dry Colorado land. As a member of Congress, my number one goal is to get our economy moving again, to start creating jobs and to build lasting economic growth that puts America back to work. To do that in Colorado, we have to recognize that jobs and economic development across this state are tied to our ability to store and deliver clean, affordable water. What's the role of government? And uh, we hear that all the time. And, you know, as an elected official, it's making sure that our streets are passable, that we have a cop when we need one. Uh, when our toilets flush, it goes someplace appropriate. And most importantly, when we turn the water on for our coffee or drink of water, we get something out of the spigot. Windsor, over the last 10 years, has seen growth in the order of 86 uh, percent, unprecedented anywhere else in the state. With that comes a lot of infrastructure needs, a lot of water needs. And, you know, quite honestly, northern Colorado as a region is one of the greatest places in the, in the nation to live. That's why people are coming to Colorado. Uh, we don't have a water shortage. I think Governor Owens once said in Colorado, we have a water storage shortage. When I think about a businessman or a businesswoman in our area, they, talk, they want to think about planning and making sure they've got the resources in place. To be able to take care of water, jobs, and the economy. And guess what? That's what this project is. It's going to benefit all of our communities. Frederick, to grow those jobs, to help those folks come to our community and be able to live, work, and play in that community. It's going to make sure that we maintain those agricultural resources of water for our farmlands. My wife's family's farmed in southwest Weld County for over 100 years. That water is very important to our farm operations. I don't want to see it go away from those farms. But I also know that we're going to grow businesses and people in our region. It is imperative that we have this water resource available to us. I want you to all know that this board has been very proactive in support of this project, as well as almost all of our local governments. Uh, we are so glad that you're here, and we're glad to be here to show you our support for you and for water storage in this area, in this region. I'm proud to be here standing up for NISP. It is a wonderful project that, quite frankly, should have been done years ago. When we talk about taking four to five times as long to permit a water project than it does to actually build a project, we have serious issues. We need to get out of that red tape, get through that red tape, and start building that water storage so the target is not on the back of agriculture. You know, the partisan talking points aside, we need to be focused on how this project fuels the American dreams of those kids. So I say yes to NISP. I say yes to those kids and their dreams, and I also say yes to to thoughtful water storage here in the state of Colorado. You look at that NISP endorsement list, and it grows every single day. Why? Because they get it. They understand what this is about. It's about Savannah and her future and all the other Savannahs out there. It's all about demographics and destiny. The two Ds. When you think about NISP, here's what's going to happen. And if you haven't written anything down today, this is the most important thing you're going to hear. We're all saying that, right? Raise your hands if you think population is going to increase. Okay? There's a couple of you didn't raise your hand. I don't want you to know. But let's look at the actual numbers. And I've done a lot of research on this. The number of births every year into the future in Colorado is going to be 13.82 births per 1,000 population. 
13.82 births per every 1,000 population. Deaths in the state of Colorado is going to be 8.27 deaths per every 1,000 population every year going into the future. So some of you that are analytical, you say, well, that's a difference of 5.5. That means just births over deaths going into the future of Colorado over the next 50 to 100 years is going to be 5.5 humans for every 1,000 population that we currently have. Now, what about migration? If you look at our net migration every year into the future, it's going to be 4.31 humans per every 1,000 population. So if you add together the 5.5 and the 4.31, that's about 10 humans every year per 1,000 population as long as the future goes in Colorado. Now, let's do something. Let's put a fence around the state of Colorado, all right? Let's not let any more migration into the state. Our population still doubles by 2015. And that population is going to take a lot of water. And that's what NISP is about. Water storage and water supply allows us to have the quality of life that we have today for the growing population in the future. By 2050, the population is going to double. The gap between supply and demand is going to grow. Statewide, up to possibly 630,000 acre feet of gap between supply and demand. Maybe as little as 190,000 acre feet. In the South Platte, that can range anywhere from about 36,000 up to over 100,000 acre feet of shortage between supply and demand by 2050. The lower range of, the, of that indicates that projects like NISP, Halligan Seaman, etc., are being developed for storage into the future to provide water supplies. If we don't develop projects, then the fallback position is the dry up of irrigated ag. Irrigated ag in Weld County alone provides an economy of over a billion dollars a year. If NISP isn't built, we've done engineering studies that show that would require a dry up of about 60,000 acres, about 100 square miles of irrigated farmland. That's our heritage here. That's our legacy. That's what we have here, an amenity of irrigated farming in this area. We don't want to sacrifice that because we're afraid to develop future water supplies that will provide the storage we need. We need to move forward with this. I said at the Ag Rally last summer, and I'll say it again to you, one of the worst things that could happen is if this project becomes about R's, D's, or anything else that labels politicians. This is about people. And water is clear and it runs clear. And we need to encourage our elected officials in all the communities, in all levels of government to be a part of the solution to be a part of this and make sure that we have water resources to sustain our economies in the agricultural community but also to help have water in our communities to sustain and grow our economies within our uh, within our individual communities over the years I don't know about you but I believe it is high time as I said last year that it's time we stop talking and start working Let's get it done. Thank you for being here.